busy industry. Good morning. Welcome back to day number three of Dell EMC World here at Dell EMC Live. My name is Brian Fanzo, better known as iSocial Fans, and we are here on the showroom floor, on the expo floor, on day number three of Dell EMC World. It's been a great two days, lots of interviews, lots of conversations going on. Of course, the keynote sessions, which we're going to kick to here in a minute, but as you probably can see behind me, there's a virtual reality going on, lots of fun sessions here. The event itself has a wide range from Internet of Things booth, Dell services, of course, lots of virtual reality through focusing on that customer experience, which of course we heard Michael Dell talk about yesterday morning. And then there's some fun going on, and we know that uh, yesterday with the CMO on stage and they had some uh, Dark Knight Batman fun. So day number three, we're gonna see if it can live up to what day number two existed, but lots of fun going on here. Make sure you're using the Dell EMC World hashtag. Of course, I'll be joined with my co-hosts, Mr. Brian Kramer and Mr. Pat Moorhead. We'll be doing interviews throughout the day, bringing you guys insights and conversations that we have here going on the floor. I'm excited to be a part of this. Lots of fun. Make sure you tune in. The hashtag's going crazy. It's been a, a lot of fun following and seeing what's going on there at the Dell EMC World hashtag. And I, I will say, like, for me, one of the things that I think was one of the themes, really day one, was customer experience and listening to your customer. And yesterday, a lot of the interviews, you would actually get to hear from customers talking about what they were, what they are shared and how Dell has impacted their business and what their success is. And I, I think that's probably a takeaway for me that I really enjoyed yesterday. And I hope as we thread through what we're talking about today here on day number three, we're gonna hear a lot of those same conversations. And you know, it doesn't matter if it's IoT, big data, the theme is always people don't buy technology for technology's sake. They buy technology for the experience it enables. And I, and I, and I think that's a lot of fun. So make sure you come out and uh, check out the Dell EMC World Expo fl uh, floor. And with that, I'm going to throw it over to this session. We'll see you Dell EMC Live. Based upon our relationship with VMware and Microsoft on PowerEdge servers. I want to dive a little deeper into this. I'm not going to go through everything on this slide, but Chad, feel free to jump in if you see some things up there that you really like. But some firsts. When we started building out these massive hyperscale, scale out data center infrastructures for our biggest customers, we released some really interesting uh, innovations. And a lot of that is based on the fact that we know that chipset design, motherboard placement and fan placement all impact power consumption as well as heat dissipation. So we were able to take that, and not everybody is an eBay, a Google, or an Amazon, but we were able to take that and put it into new and exciting form factors like the very first for remote and branch office modular piece of infrastructure called the Vertex, very exciting. It's 5U, it has office thermals, office acoustics, and it can use office power. So very efficient, designed for everywhere. And, and that's taking some of the biggest innovations ever and bringing it right down to an office anywhere around the world because it can survive in amazing heat levels, like 104? It's, uh, ba yeah, basically. I mean, it's 45 degrees C is the what it's certified to. Right. I'll add a couple others. As you think about what Dell does for innovation, you know, Dell is known as a company that can help provide innovation to the masses. I'll use one that I met with uh, one of our good customers yesterday. You know, if you see this here, it's called Express Flash. Express Flash is designed to be very similar to just basically an accelerator using flash technology. The previous innovation that was out there in the marketplace was based off of PCI slots. PCI slots are great. We all like them, but what happens when something goes down? You have mass problems because getting to them is really hard. This person I met with yesterday was all on the PCI card-based stuff. They were sliding out servers. It was accidentally knocking off others because of the way they were set up. They were losing service to all of their end customers. So their big ask was, hey, Dell, you drove this Express Flash, which is a way to get Flash up front and faster drives than anything that had ever been done before. We drove an industry standard. We drove things different than competitors, but this is what has been taken up now. Well, now instead of doing rear-facing ways to do accelerated uh, compute, you have something that is up front in the drives. You can do a whole bunch of these. They're much faster than anything else because the key that we're hearing from most of our customers on applications is the processor is no longer the bottleneck. 
The bottleneck is everything around it, from memory to drives to I.O. How do I speed up my applications in a faster and better manner? This is one of the ways you can do it. And this is just the way that Dell brings technology to the market is a great example here of how we can help solve, uh, solve problems and needs of our, in our customers. Yeah, and, and how do we do that? Um, uh, as I mentioned, we've been at it for 20 years. For 20 years, we've had the same basic design tenets, and those are uh, maximize operational effectiveness, optimize flexibility at any scale, and ensure worry-free computing. And what does that mean? It means that anytime we have a feature or an innovation that gets placed into a platform, it better have direct customer impact and customer value. And there's some examples of that with maximize operational effectiveness. How about if you were able to save 92% of your time in firmware updates just by leveraging a very simple set of tools, the Dell um, Remote Access Controller as well as Repository Manager? Very simple. Or optimize flexibility at any scale. You can have a 99% reduction in your server configuration time by leveraging the Dell EMC Zero Touch automated server configuration tool. You can bring up a server in 10 minutes and thousands of servers after that in seconds. Now, ensure worry-free computing. We've already seen how Dell EMC stacks up against a commodity provider to bring you that kind of peace of mind. But how about against a more proprietary offering? What about 28% faster VM migration against UCS for half the cost? So you begin to see how Dell EMC innovation brings you back more time, energy, and money so that you can begin your own internal data center pervasive innovation. And that's what we're all about. So shouldn't selecting modern compute be really, really easy? And I think the operative word there is modern. And I'm going to hand it over to you, Chad, the clicker. Awesome. Thank you, Jamie. Now, as I think about compute, really what we're trying to provide you in compute is a portfolio of things that manage, use, work the exact same way no matter what you choose. We don't really care what form factor you choose, which one works best for your data center. Uh, if everybody knows Gartner, all the analysts that have been walking around here all this week, everyone said that a number of years ago that you would all be on modular by 2008. Now, is everyone in here on modular, everyone doing blades? Nope. There's reasons for that. And there's reasons we continue to sell tower servers. There's reasons we continue to sell racks. What I'll tell you, though, is most of the focus of innovation is on how do we do more with modular. Because modular is where it can actually solve a whole bunch of other data center challenges. It's also a great combination with virtualization. It's a great combination with a whole bunch of other different potentials. Now, we have a few as you, different options as you look at modular. Over here on the far right side, if you're thinking of doing extreme scale, this is what we have called extreme scale infrastructure. That's the ones that, hey, I'll build you whatever you want if you want to come order about 40000 from me tomorrow. We have those types of customers. By the way, anyone, I'll take your order right now if you want to order 40,000 servers off of any configuration you want in the world. No one yet. Man, that's probably because it's probably about 10 customers globally. But there's a lot of things that we learn from these type of customers. When we, the learnings, the kind of standardization, the things they seek, we often will put then into our PowerEdge C line. PowerHC is a way to get you fast compute. We don't guarantee like compatibility between generations. Uh, think, for example, I have a 4 and 2U C6320. I can't guarantee next gen generation. The same chassis will be used for, the same, for a similar sled. That is what we have the middle chassis for. If you want consistency, you want commonality, you want ease of management, all this stuff in the middle. Vertex, which is designed for like remote office, branch office, SMB, all-in-one appliances. That's what that's for. FX2, we'll discuss more in just a second, but that's really designed to give you a bite-sized chassis for, that gives you all of the capabilities of modular plus all the flexibility of rack servers. And then if you're a standard historical blade customer, that's what the M1000E is for. That's still probably the best thing in the world for power if that's your major data center concern. If you're able to scale out in kind of large chunks, the M1000E is perfect. It's the best blade platform out there. Now with all of that, really what Dell is trying to do is provide you flexibility. I get the, the question all the time is, okay, what type of flexibility can we give you? If you're not familiar with Dell, Dell is really able to give you a great deal of flexibility working with channel partners, working with EMC, working with anyone else. As you think about what our capabilities, what we're trying to do is work with as many of our vendors as we possibly can 
to give you as much flexibility as possible. You know, if you look here, this is basically like a R730. R730 can do, you know, hundreds of storage, op thousands of storage options, tons of memory options, tons of CPU options. All of that, I mean, basically you can get up to about a million different configs. That is what we can do just through our normal factory and other processes. It is just amazing the amount of flexibility that we are able to provide. Now the goal here though is really to provide that flexibility so that we can customize for you. Everybody has a different way to do applications. We're at Hadoop. I have people that do Hadoop, you know, little bit of memory. I have people who are like, give me as much memory as I possibly can within this server. There's just very different ways to do things. That's why we're trying to give you the flexibility to design and tailor to your data center. It's also why, you know, what we are trying to do is design unique innovations for the PowerEdge portfolio. Now, what was the biggest change in servers 10 years ago? Massive change. We all changed greatly. Maybe 15 years ago. I know it's early. We just bought them outside of EMC. VMware. Virtualization. Everybody's virtualized now, right? Anybody not virtualized? I know there's, there's a couple applications here and there. Virtualization changed everything. It changed everything the way that we do servers. Now, as I think about where we're going into the future, that was the biggest change we've ever had in servers. People at the time were asking, Dell, why are you embracing this? Really, it's because we see the value to our customers. Now, going into the future, I'll tell you the biggest change that I think are going to happen in the next few years is stuff that we've, you've probably heard a lot about here. Software-defined storage and software-defined networking. Now, if you think of back in the, in the day, you had software-defined networking that really wasn't even possible. And the reason for that was if you even think of EMC, you think of Cisco and everyone else, they use completely proprietary hardware that they built and put proprietary software on top of it. That was very different than what we were doing in the x86 world. Now as you look at it, you have, let's say we'll just take a Cisco switch. Cisco switch is based off of the same Broadcom ASIC that a everyone else in the world uses. And then they put their proprietary software on top of it. That means in the future, as we think of a software-defined networking, software-defined storage world, everything is moving to industry standards and hardware. We're here. The cool thing on that for me, for my you know, job security, is that everything is coming to the server. Software-defined networking runs on a server. Software-defined storage runs on a server. Everything is coming to the server. But what I th that means for me is thinking of how do I design best then for your applications, your needs, is I'm going to have to drastically change everything I do on a server. That means, you know, I have to make sure the more processing power, high capacity memory. I have to make sure I'm doing a lot more in storage. Storage has greatly changed over the years. I like to use this example is that if I think back five or six years, the R710 was our most highly dense storage server in a 2U form factor. That was 12 drives in 2U. Now, we had then came out with an R720 XD. Our 720XD was 26 drives in 2U. Now we have something called the FX2. FX2 is 50 drives in 2U of space. That is unbelievable. 12 to 50 in basically about five years. That's because now applications are like how much memory, how much storage, how much networking can I put as close to the processor as I possibly can? Because the processor is not my bottleneck. It's everything else around it. And that's the way that we're thinking of how do we design things to best meet the new Dell and EMC world, to best meet virtualization, and do everything else that you're really needing in your data center to give you consistency and at the same time get you what you need in every single server. Now as we, as we think about that, really what we're also trying to do is provide you a great deal of flexibility on how we do com compute and how we do design. Dell puts a ton of engineering thought and design into every single server we produce or every single storage array. But if you, as you think about it, this little chart is designed to show you the little bit of complexity and flexibility we are able to pr provide you. Build, by doing kind of a building block approach to each individual server, we are able to give more a lot more technology flexibility. You can choose kind of bays, you can choose the way that you want to do which part, portion of the server. It also gives, you, it gives us engineering efficiency so we can do more things for you. It also gives you, you know, a lot more that you can just do kind of holistically and choose the application. 
We know the workload is the most important. You're not thinking of how do I run a server, you're thinking of how do I run my exchange? How do I run other things in my data center to present my end users with the best solution? This gives you a great deal more flexibility than anything else out there in the market, and it gives us more flexibility to move forward into the future. Now, as we do think about it, we do also have a, a great deal you know, more things that we're re really working to partner. The fun thing about where we're going into the future, and I know that just the other day, one of the things they mentioned that scale I o, there's going to be things like scale I.O. ready nodes and other things. Now, there wasn't much context in that presentation on what that means to you. The, the big thing here is what we are capable of doing going into the future is hopefully, as I mentioned, you know, software-defined networking, software-defined storage. We can provide you one base platform, like an R730, R730 XD, FX2, that will then be able to scale for you into other ways. Now think of you know, scale I.O., think of storage. How do I do compellent, Apisher, data recovery? How do I provide one platform that you then learn once, you test once, you're used to the same. If you have spares, you can have the same spare power supplies. If you want anything, it's basically the exact same thing. Going forward, we can do that with iDRAC. iDRAC is what makes a server really smart. That's how you make an intelligent server. You provide iDRAC that is down on the motherboard that is presenting itself to any management tool you have. That is a neat way to give you the capabilities to do automated updates, automated management, automated monitoring, and now I can do it across Nutanix, Microsoft Hybrid Cloud with Azure. I can do it across Precision. I can do it against all the things that we, we actually do within our storage. Then you have a commonality. You have a way to manage your data center in a simpler, easier manner. And that's really what they're, we were trying to say with the scale I.O. thing in, in the presentation just the other day. Now the other capability we have that is brand new to us is this thing we're calling DSS. DSS is a capability to give you a little more flexibility for those places that you're wanting to do something that is unique to you. Let me use an example. Most of you are probably on Intel, Broadcom, QLogic, Mellanox, SolarFair. There's so many NICs out there in the world. We have some other ones that are out there. You're, anyone on Chelsea cards? They're like the 10th largest NIC vendor. They make a nice card. We have certain vin customers that are very into Chelsea cards. But as a mainstream Dell provider, as much as I showed you earlier, there's a ton of flexibility we provide. I can't support all 20 NIC vendors that are out in the marketplace. But if you have a large enough thing that is really mission critical to you, we can provide this and support it through our DSS line. That is also the places, if you're also one of those users that are like, hey, Intel released a new drive yesterday and I need it today. De typically, Dell will test something for about six weeks after it's released before we release it in the commodity space. If you are convinced you know it, you've tested it already, this is also what this capability is for, that we will support it for you. So going forward, really what we're trying to provide is in a world where commodities are becoming more and more a bigger deal because it's not just about the processor, it's about the package of how we put it all together, this is a new capability that we are providing you for flexibility. Now probably the most important new platform we've, pro we've provided is really this one I mentioned earlier is kind of a hybrid platform. The hybrid platform between a rack and a blade is really what we call FX2. Now the key thing to this platform, the key thing is we are providing you a building block approach to meet your IT workload needs. Now think of it, I love, I've been the blade guy for a long time, but if you have a big M1000E blade chassis, you have other blade chassis, there are challenges to it. Let's say you want to change from 10 gig to 25 gig in the future. We have a lot of people interested in doing those type of things. 10 gig to 25 gig in the future means you're taking, taking out the server, on it, taking out the MES card, taking out the switch in the back, and it takes time and it's very impactful. It also is not using industry standards. As much as I love the, mo the blade stuff that I do, it is a way to solve an, a n combining networking and storage and servers in a very sim simple, easy manner. But it's not designed for ultimate flexibility. It's designed because you have a way to do things. We have a big customer that likes to take all of their servers and they have FX2 and they like to re-image them and redo the networking over the weekend because their needs will change. They told us the other day that they changed 5,000 servers over a weekend. Now they do it automated because iDRAC is spectacular. They also do it where they just change up the card in the back. Now that would be really, really hard in a uh, blade world. That's why people like rack servers. But everyone loves the modularity. They love the deployment. They love the management. They love the simplicity of blades. 
This is the way that we can do it in a way similar to Rex. You get standard PCI slots, you get standard management, but you can choose which of your two U makes the most sense. So for example, if you wanted to do a two U that was like, hey, I just need industry standard, standard compute, 24 DIMMs, two socket, I just need it kind of dense. Kind of dense is what we call the FC630, two socket. You could also do a four socket. You could fit two of those in here. You can get four FC630s in here. We have a lot of people who are doing that. We have a lot of people who are also saying, hey, what I want, though, is I need a software-defined storage array with 50 drives. That's one FC630 with three of these FD332 slide-out drawers. 50 drives basically seen locally to the individual server. That's a great software-defined storage node. But some of you might be like, hey, my need is I need as much dense compute as I possibly can get. If I need as much dense compute off of the processors as I possibly can get, that's what the FC430 is designed for. It's a quarter width. You can do eight of them in one 2U chassis. Very different need than doing software-defined storage. But I've now given you the capability that every 2U can be different. So let's say you have a Hadoop platform that needs a ton of storage. You can do FC630 with a bunch of FD332s all in 2Us. All seen locally, all local, cheap, inexpensive 2.5 drives. You can also do quarter width for that HPC over in the other side of the building. There's a, but you have learned one chassis. You've learned one way to do management. You have the capability to move things around. This is the way that we provide you a better level of flexibility than anything else out there has ever done. It is way better than almost a, than anything else we have done. It's a very cool stuff here. You know, th it's interesting. I, I really like this quote from Forrester is when we released this product, they basically said the FX system is, is a harbinger of the likely future direction of mainstream enterprise servers. It's quite the compliment that we got this right and that we are able to provide you the workload needs, the flexibility needs that you would need in any type of server. So can my server platform really help me innovate? Now there's some key innovations that we want to think about. Now, so as I think about how do I innovate, I really think about how do I help speed up your efficiency? You know, if you think of some of these, you know, you can use things like Flash. A lot of people are probably, you know, using standard SSDs. You're using all kinds of standard, you know, spinning spindles. But as you think about your applications, your applications and your user needs are probably bound by how, do I, how fast I can provide things. So if you use, you know, optimized with Flash, you know, 10.5 times faster online transactions is just the example here. You can really use fast drives to speed up what's going on. The great news is Flash stuff is also consistently coming down in cost. So it's not like I'm telling you go spend a whole bunch of money. Flash drives and SSD drives are actually going to be very close in cost very, very quickly here. And by Flash in that case, I'm talking about the NVMe type drives. Hybrid storage. We have a lot of people who want to tier storage. Tiering storage used to be something you would have to buy, like a big EMC thing to go do. Now you can steer, tier within an individual 2U server. So we have a lot of people who say, hey, I want it this close for my application sake to the processors, because that's the way I'm going to speed things up. These are large 3.5 inch standard spinning disks. Up here you have a bunch of 1.8 Spin, uh, spindles that are really fast, fast SSDs. So you have this as your main, hey, I'm, this is where my application is running, and then they store it right down here when, the, when they're done. That is a great way to really speed up what's going on in a server. And again, very different than what we've ever been able to do before. Other examples, turbo, we have turbocharged performance with things like caching, data integrity. There's some great things that we are providing with unique innovation on each individual platform. And this, in this case, I'm still really only talking about 1U and 2U servers. So as you think about what we can do in FX2, you think about what we can do in a modular platform like Blades, there's a great deal of flexibility, and this is just some innovations we've done just around the storage within 1U, 2U servers, just to keep this discussion simple. Ma you know, enterprise applications, we have some very cool stuff. A lot of people don't know we have the top two, three of the top benchmark workload leaders in the world on SAP HANA. SAP HANA is not something that Dell is uh, really known for very much, but we have some of the best benchmarks in the world using some of that innovation that I described in the last slide. Really, a lot, we also have a ton of them with uh, Oracle. You're wanting to do something like an Oracle, nine times faster with SAS SSDs over SanDisk DAS Cache, which is one of our partners we actually put onto our RAID cards. So nine times faster, eight times better performance with SSDs versus drives, you know, 23% lower cost, 
and more performance using a combination of everything. So really, again, you know, as your application is typically now bound by the drives or typically bound by the memory, this is how you help speed it up. You take advantage of the other technologies and the innovation that we have added into these chassis. And that goes across Oracle, SAP, and then here's a good one with SQL. You know, you can for if you want to think of how do I change up my data center over time, if I just go back, you know, 2008 doesn't seem like that long ago, but the amount of technology we, we can do, I mean, four times better performance today than uh, 2008 for something like SQL here over in R910. So that's some great changes in innovation we've been able to increase over time. And this one's kind of nice, it's 42 times. That almost seems like an unreal number, I know. But 42 times faster using NVMe SSDs on the R920. So that's kind of an amazing how fast this technology moves. And again, this is how you can serve your applications and to your users faster and make sure your business runs faster. Now all of that, I know that I want to sell you great servers. I want you to use my servers, but I know you're going to use them. So that's why really we make sure we provide you with great open manage innovation. Now as you think about the way that Dell does management, there's a couple different options here. We know some people are like, hey, I have my data center way over there. I don't ever touch it. I know some people are like, hey, I have my management tools are all about integrating with other tools that I already have. Dell, I never want to use your tools. All of those are fine. We also know people are like, hey, I have to touch every server every day. I have to be in front of it. That's the way I deploy it. I want to just make sure I'm hugging my servers daily. Daily server huggers, you're still out there. But that's why we try to provide you with a, a portfolio of ways you can do that. Now, first of all, if you think of Dell Open Manage and iDRAC, iDRAC, as I mentioned earlier, is what makes an intelligent server. The intelligent server, though, can present itself to almost any tool. Let's say you're a VMware user and you want to use all of your uh, management and everything else within VMware. Great, do it. We're very happy to do that. Open Manage has a tool and a plugin that completely plugs into VMware. Microsoft, BMC, there's a whole bunch of other tools that you can use that you don't even have to actually use our tools because behind the scenes, iDRAC is presenting itself to that other tool. Cool, now you can see physical servers in there. You can see updates. You could do a BIOS update within VMware. That's pretty cool. Now I've just saved myself a pane of glass. I've just made my life easier. But if you want us to provide you with the console, we can also do that. I mean, we have all kinds of different tools there. We also have things that, you know, really what we heard from most of our users when we launched our latest generation of servers, and we'll continue taking that forward, was how do I make my processes automated? I want to make it automated, I want to make it simple, I want to make it easy. So now with automation, you, you know, there's, you would, this thing here is zero touch auto configuration. You get online, it'll actually auto update, it'll auto deploy, it'll auto monitor, it will do everything for you. That, we used to hear all the time people were like, yeah, it takes me X long to set up a server, it's, it's forever, it's really difficult. Now you can actually just set it up, it'll point at a share and be done. That is really where we, are, we have gone with all of our touch, or all of our servers especially because we've also made it completely agent free. As you think about you know, agents in your environment, we used to hear this complaint all the time, please get rid of all of them, I don't even want like two around, now it's completely agent free. We've also done some really cool stuff, you know, I told you there's a bunch of uh, server huggers out there, some stuff that we've done here is like iDRAC Quick Sync. iDRAC Quick Sync allows you to take the data center in your pocket, if you have our app, you can actually click on it with the bezel on like an R730, and actually you will be able to deploy and point it to things from there. You can also do, uh, that's basically using NFC technology. You, NFC technology is just very near field communication. That you're, you're clicking on it, you can point it to share, you can do other things. What we have a lot of people using that for is, hey, I'm gonna rack a server, click, I'm pointing it at a share, I'm gonna start racking my other server while that one deploys, I'm done. It's pretty nice and slick. Then as soon as you have racked your next server, put your phone up against it again, NFC it, you're pointing at a new share. Again, you're all done. That is the way that we are trying to help users. We can, you can do all of that remotely if you choose to. You can do it all right in front of the server. We want to provide you with options to best meet the way that you design your data center. So there's all kinds of different cool things here. Uh, you know, we've just highlighted a few. You know, we have Easy Restore, HTML5, Virtual Console, um, there's all kinds of neat stuff that we are able to do. As I said, it's all agent free, all is what makes the intelligent server capable. Powered security is also a very important one. You know, I'm sure no one here has had security issues. As Jamie mentioned, you know, there's a million hacks a day. That is the way that we, as Dell, are trying to make sure that we are designing things correctly for you. 
You know, some good things we've done, you know, secure patching of software, that's through our BIOS. You know, we also do that at our factory. If you ever wonder, hey, how does Delta fa do factory stuff? We clear out all things out of our factory, make sure that it is designed directly for, for you and there's nobody has actually added things at the end of the line. Protected firmware updates, prevention against server tampering, access control. You don't have to let everyone into your server internally. If you don't trust Bob to do updates correctly, which I hear from people all the time, we have nine, 10 people in our data center. I trust nine of them to do updates correctly. That other person, lock him out. He can do other things, but he cannot, you could keep him from doing things in your data center if he's the, the guy who actually makes mistakes all the time. I will tell you from our services and everything else, the, the biggest thing that brings down servers anywhere and has problems, human error. Human error is always the, the biggest challenge that we see with, with people. This is the way to protect from human error. You can also do things such as you, you, have a, you could have a locked image. You could have a locked image that any, anything changes, it'll flag you. It, you can also auto go back to that locked image. That's the way that we are, have, provide security. That's all one of the ways that we make sure that the human error is, tried to be, is attempted to be eliminated. So all of those go into, you know, as we think about it, you know, there's all kinds of stuff. We know there's supply chain risks we've mitigated against. We've uh, self-defending applications. There's all kinds of stuff that we have tried to do for security to make sure this is as capable as possible and that you are as secure as we can possibly make you. That also goes to, you know, Dell also has a great thing called SecureWorks. SecureWorks helps people defeat people trying to hack them all day long. SecureWorks is a great tool in, the, in Dell's portfolio, the Dell EMC portfolio. Uh, they're just kind of another one. I'm sure they're around here somewhere that you could talk to them if, if you wanted more best practices. So, you know, as we think about, you know, what we are trying to do for technology, you know, as I mentioned earlier, of like the NVMe and other drives, really one of our first goals is really how do we make technology usable for everyone? This is about how do we make it accessible to the masses? How do we provide end users with the best solutions? As I think of innovation, my innovation always comes from you. You tell me what challenges Dell ha ha or you have with Dell, you have with other things, you have applications. How do I help you solve those needs? That's really where our best needs, uh, needs and ideas come from. We can do innovation for innovation's sake, but I'd really rather spend my time and my effort designing for your needs. And that's really where all of our stuff has come from. You know, our capabilities, our complexity, our and cost, you know, our com capabilities keep going up, our cost, our complexity keep going down. Really what we're trying to do is help you deliver the best long-term value and the best efficiency in your data center. And as you think about our solutions from FX2 to anything else, this is what we are capable of providing. So w with that, you know, I know, let's see here. Whoop, we're good on time, nice. All right, so with that, you know, there's a ton of demos downstairs if you haven't seen all our servers. I know there's an FX2 down there. I know there's pretty much every other server we have. There's also management labs. If you're like, hey, I'd love to understand how Dell does management. We have the best management tools in the world within the open Manage portfolio. And it will continue to integrate with all of the new stuff with EMC, VMware, and everybody else that we have under the Dell umbrella nowadays. So there's some great stuff that you can see downstairs. We, you know, we have some great Converge sessions, HCI. Um, modular sessions, modular session was yesterday, so you can probably see that off of the slides or on video. And we have a whole bunch of sub server subject matter experts downstairs. Now with that, since I ended a little bit early here, any questions, comments? Good. Sure. Yeah. So the question is, there's a I showed a hybrid product on here. Uh, there was a combination of SSDs and spindles. It's uh, this one here. Yeah. This is the R730XD. It has a combination of these up here, uh, 1.8 inch drives. Uh, there's you know a ton of them. I think there's uh, 16 of them here up here for very fast application use. And then you have your, you could have your cold storage then down here at the bottom. And that would be a good combination for those applications that do need the hybrid within one space. Yes. So th the reason for this is what we have is a lot of people want to run their application super fast. But what they don't want those uh, drives doing or those SSDs doing is afterwards holding on to the rest of the data. They want that 
they just want to get into really cheap storage they can just sit somewhere. But they want it close to the application. This used to be something you really just did in a storage world. But now you'd have these run really fast, and they're like uh, 11x better performance than others. But you have really fast spindles uh, up top doing that are SSDs. These down at the bottom then would just be really cheap, inexpensive 3.5 inch storage. These will be op usually optimized for capacity. These are you know usually 1.2 terabytes per. This is you know you could probably do a 12 terabyte type drive, and it's probably slightly less expensive. So the, the push for all so push for all flash, push for all flash, yeah. Th well, push for all flash, absolutely. I mean, what what you're you're thinking like this one is a combination of I need performance and I need capacity and cost for stuff that I just don't use very often. We all have that stuff like uh, Jamie mentioned earlier. Everybody has their giant email inboxes. Well, that when you get to like saving your emails that you want to save just in case you know Bob gets mad at you again in two years, you can save that somewhere. But you don't need it up here and providing to the, your end user very quickly. What you want to be able to do is save that down here, where it's very cheap per gig. All uh, there used to be, we used to have a joke about it, like a one terabyte baby picture. Those things happen. You send it around to everybody, and you suddenly have a one terabyte baby picture. You don't want to keep that up here. You'd love to get rid of it from your data, your, from your stuff, but you want to keep it on as cheap a storage as you possibly can. So what you want is you want Flash running your applications. You want Flash presenting the storage that is really important to you. What you don't want is the stuff that's not important to you, but you know you have to back up for like Sarbanes-Oxley and everybody else. I mean, imagine a doctor's office. Doctor's offices can't get rid of anything. Well, you don't want that on you know really fast storage. You want that on as cheap a stuff as you can possibly buy and as high a capacity so that it's not a problem. So use the flash where it's important. Also just use the cheap storage where it's important. Other questions? Good. Yeah, so the question is, can we throttle the CPU to use less power? And it's really m c tied up in power management capabilities. We actually have uh, integrated something called Open Manage Power Center. Open Manage Power Center is actually a partnership with Intel. With that, all of that, will, you can fully throttle the processors. You can cap processors. The, the neat thing you can do with Open Manage Power Center is you can do a, a number of capabilities. Uh, I, I like to joke, you have, you have those servers that you're like, hey, the CEO server, I got to make sure that always gets the power it needs because I have power limitations. But it, some smaller companies have like that. I have my iTunes server. You don't really care if the iTunes server is running a little slow for a few people if you have power capping. Well, you can cap the, the iTunes server and be like, hey, I, it's never going over 300 watts. Everybody in the company can be hitting it. It's still never going over 300 watts, and it's going to cap everything in that server. But the CEO server, that's going to be in great shape the whole time. So I, I make him happy. So you can cap anything you want to in the server. You can cap it. You can track it. You can monitor it over time. You can cap the processors. Processors, I will tell you, by the way, as you think about designing your data center, processors continue to get hotter. We are at, you know, the new processors we have today are like 165 watt from Intel. That is going to continue to be one of your big data center challenges. A couple years ago, the hottest processor I had was 120 watts. Now I'm at 165 that can spike to like 305. That's a big difference off of how you think about designing a data center. And to your point, being able to cap that is very important. So it certainly would say that's why we give that power management software. That's just part of the capabilities of the server. And it can interact with multiple servers? It can interact with multiple servers. You can get it on every single server. You can cap it at a rack level. You can kind of, it just gives you a great deal of flexibility. Okay. Other questions? Oh, two questions. Okay, two in a row. Everybody's cool with that? All right, go ahead. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, th that's a that's a very fair question. Yeah, good question. You know, I'd, I'd say there's kind of a couple different ways is we, we can help. I mean, we have lots of online tools uh, that should be able to help. We also have you know partners within Dell that will partner with you to partner with your customer. Uh, there's also, you know, as you think of, there's a spectrum of stuff that we will have as Dell now that we are Dell EMC. 
you know, you mentioned hyperconverged. Hyperconverged is, you know, what we were going to be calling a lot of like our vSAN type appliances and other things. Uh, VxRail, vBlocks, all those will be in the converged, hyperconverged portfolio. Those are really designed to be kind of sold almost as, as a package. We're going to come do everything for you. We're going to help you install. We will do it all as one. You know, the, the modular portfolio, like I mentioned, like FX2, Blades, all of those, we have basically have a bunch of tools and other things we can help you design what makes the most sense for each application. The real, the real key is, like, I'm asked all the time, oh, hey, how much power does an R730 run? I'm like, well, your, your application is slightly different than what I would run on R730. Um, so even using the exact same application, because everybody does it slightly differently. So usually what we do is we provide a bunch of power tools, we provide performance tools. We will try basically try to partner with you or partner with your end user and you to ba make sure that we are providing the right thing for you. Um, and I know, agree completely, consulting on that type of things is very important. Okay. All right, so probably about out of time here. Now, thank you for showing up for the 8 a.m. bright and early session. We very much appreciate that. We hope everyone is still awake. Um, certainly tell us if you have any other questions. We'll be around, and like I mentioned, there's a whole bunch of other stuff downstairs uh, that we can also give you more information as you go. Thank you very much.